animals in Kenya, especially livestock, that is cattle, are faced by many challenges such as disease threats like East Coast fever. In today's episode of The Resident Vet, we are going to bring you some of the solutions from the Veterinary Research Institute here in Mogoga about some of the technologies that farmers can adopt to fight this Kira disease. Kaidri, join us. I am Dr. Monica Maichomo, uh, a senior research scientist and uh, the institute director in Kalo, the Veterinary Research Institute. My name is Dr. Moses Olu. I work for Kalro, Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization. My name is Dr. Miriam Mathenge. I'm a private practitioner in Nyadalwa County. Uh, the Veterinary Research Institute is one of the 17 institutes in Kalo and uh, with a mandate of uh, research into issues of animal health and animal welfare. So we do our research work to address uh, diseases of economic importance, addressing or um, affecting the food producing animals so that we can be able to deliver or inform the effective disease control technologies. Uh, together with the in um, extension services. Some of the examples we have like uh, East Coast fever, we have uh, foot and mouth disease, we have uh, contagious bovine pneumonia or the lying keto disease. Uh, we have others, uh, tick-borne diseases, uh, helminthosis, and among other viral diseases. It is diseases mostly that affect trade that can make the animals not to access the market that uh, also limit production. Uh, we can also say that they are zoonotic in the sense that they can um, uh, be able to affect uh, the livestock keepers as well. East Coast fever is a disease of cattle. It affects only cattle. And uh, most of the time, if your cattle have not been exposed to this pathogen before, then most of the time they die from this disease. And local uh, animals do not show many uh, serious clinical signs of ECF. But the exotic breeds, the, uh, the dairy breeds that we keep, show serious severe clinical signs. So where this disease is brought by, about by ticks, it's called the brown ear tick, and because it's called the brown ear tick, it sticks uh, on the ears and around the perineum of the cow, the tail of the cow. So when it sticks there, then it transmits the, the disease to the animals, and they get sick and come down with ECF. And when uh, your animals get ECF, for milking cows, first you notice a severe drop in milk. The volume of milk that you get from the animal goes down, the animal will stop eating, and thereafter you'll see tearing. The animal will start shedding tears, as well as swelling of the lymph nodes around the neck, you're able to notice, and around the ears, you'll notice swellings. These are lymph nodes that swell once the disease is in the animal. Then uh, as the disease progresses, the animal will develop difficulty in breathing, and finally die because fluids come from the body into the lungs and they uh, stop the animal from breathing normally. Then that is what causes the death of the animal. From the so many years of my practice, um, we have seen this ECF disease is a threat in Nyandaro County. And mainly because, uh, especially on the northern part of Nyandaro, we normally have uh, animals transpassing. At times we have these animals from like Kipia, from other counties, passing through our areas in, in, in informal way. In form of way. And, um, so, and then again there is also a lot of buying of uh, hay from different places whereby we are not sure about the biosecurity measures um, in such a way that uh, our animals are always at a threat of infection by ECF, dis um, East Coast fever disease. And so we feel that it is very timely. It is very timely because we want to use the approach of farm biosecurity measures, whereby we need to have good um, tick, con uh, tick control plans, 
uh, good um, feed and fodder plants as methods of uh, tick control, uh, as methods of better farming uh, systems in order to reduce on uh, usage of antibiotics on our animals by through control, uh, infection prevention control measures whereby in the animals uh, don't have to get sick you, you prevent and so immunization or, or vaccination is also another method of um, uh, it's also another method of reducing usage of um, antibiotics because it's an infection prevention control measure. The training is very important because this disease is unique. We call it the uh, infection and treatment method. In essence, we are using a live organism. It's a very crude method of vaccination. So it requires a lot of care in terms of its delivery. It has to deliver the right dosage at the right uh, parameters. So that is why we want to train them so that uh, we do not have a lot of breakthroughs because of the life um, uh, pathogen. And then uh, they have to monitor the vital parameters in case of a breakthrough because we can get like 5 to 10 percent breakthrough infection. Then they can be able to treat and ensure that the farmer does not lose their invaluable animals. This, tick, um, uh, this ECF vac uh, vaccination training, it's a new technology. And um, most of us, by the time we were completing our schools, our uh, training, this um, training was not well endowed in us. And so we feel that um, uh, that taking this uh, training is a golden opportunity because now we'll be able to help our farmers in order to ensure that using the infection prevention control measure through vaccinations, we're going to bring the disease down. The research on this vaccine was done in the 70s and the 80s, in the last century. So over time, because the disease is a serious challenge, farmers were looking for a solution. And uh, this, disease, this vaccine was, has been adopted in the last 10 years by farmers. So the disease, uh, the vaccine is uh, a live pathogen. The causative, what causes East Coast fever, is what we use for vaccinating these animals. So this is prepared from in the lab, and uh, the ticks are infected with this pathogen, and the ticks are used to make the vaccine. Thereafter, the ticks are used, are crushed, and this is what we use for vaccinating these animals. There are two versions of the vaccine. We have the Mugoga cocktail, which is a combination of three strains. There is Kiambu 5. There is a Serengeti trans, uh, uh, transformed and uh, uh, another one. And then we have the Malikebuni vaccine, it's all strain, which was obtained from the coastal part of Kenya. And uh, both of both variants, uh, the beauty is that they, they attain 70% uh, both homologous and heterologous uh, coverage. Uh, across the different uh, uh, strains that are found in the country. This is a live vaccine. So live vaccine means that it can cause that disease if not used properly. So unlike other vaccines that are out there in the market, this uh, is a different vaccine and that's why uh, veterinarians have to go through this special training to ensure that instead uh, that animals get, uh, re get protected with this vaccine instead of getting them ill because of the live nature of this vaccine. So we have had problems and reports previously where people have used this vaccine, people who are not trained and animals have come down with East Coast fever. So because we need to uh, stop that, therefore we are training them on how to effectively use this vaccine. We, we have uh, received uh, very good results uh, using the government farms. For example, Carlo has large farms where they faced uh, a lot of uh, cattle mortalities, especially in the buffalo corridors. And once we did the vaccination for them, that problem was resolved. We've worked with lunchers both in the coast and also in Lake Ipia and pastoral communities, including daily farms. And uh, the reports are very good, very encouraging. However, we have had a few breakthroughs, but it was uh, just part of the norm because we say we can get 5 to 10% breakthroughs, but with good uh, monitoring and uh, timely treatment with the available drugs, they have not uh, lost 
uh, animals uh, significantly. So whatever the response we've gotten is just within the norm and very encouraging. The only challenge we find with this vaccine is that being that it's a live vaccine, it can actually cause the disease. So for people who are not trained, when they use this vaccine and do not use it properly, you get some animals coming down with East Coast fever. And uh, if you use it properly, you get, you minimize the number of animals that come down with the disease. So this is the major constraint that we find. The other constraint that has been mentioned is the cost of the vaccine compared to other vaccines that cost far much less. You find that this vaccine is delivered to farmers at about 600 shillings for a young calf to about uh, 1,500 to very huge cattle. So this cost is uh, different from what other vaccines cost. So fi farmers find it a bit too, uh, a bit not very affordable, especially if you have many heads of cattle. But comparing to the cost of treating an animal that comes down with ECF, which is about 4,000 to 6,000 shillings, this vaccine still gives you much more economic uh, value for your money. We have... Um working on a novella CBPP subunit vaccine uh, uh, that is contagious bovine pleuropneumonia or simply known as the lung keto disease and um, working to develop uh, a more efficacious vaccine because the available contavax uh, it has uh, challenges of uh, uh, gaglin or death at the necrosis at the injection site. So we are right now at uh, um, testing the laboratory proteins. And uh, so far we have just concluded that on station trial. The results are promising and very good. And then we'll be able to take the validation of the commercial uh, badge to the next uh, step and hope that soon we'll have... Uh, a more efficacious vaccine for controlling CBPP. We have also continued uh, doing other works. We are working on uh, uh, building on that uh, vaccine uh, development infrastructure. We are working on other vaccines like uh, CCPP, that's the lung uh, disease of goats. And we are also working on a vaccine on chamomastitis and uh, among other which are uh, another work we are doing is on how to uh, combine vaccines for poultry like for example working on combined Newcastle disease and uh, IBD that's gubolo. The reason as to why the vaccine was brought about is because of the, the losses that farmers get. ECF is documented to cost about 1 billion US dollars in East and Southern Africa. So this is quite some money and it comes in the form of therapeutics used, medicines used for treating these animals and the animals that actually die from the disease. So if the vaccine is used, then we cut down on these losses. The other thing is that uh, acaricides that are used for controlling ticks have developed a lot of resistance and they are now not working properly. So these challenges are get making farmers look for alternatives. And the safest alternative as we talk to today is the vaccine. The other thing is that the acaricides that we use are also pollutants of the environment. When they pollute the environment, then it makes it unsafe for human health. My call and my advisory to the farmers is that this disease is expensive and uh, causes a lot of challenge, uh, but uh, they need to consult the health providers, the qualified ones, the trained ones, because solutions are there. Uh, we recommend uh, had uh, pro uh, uh, protection or, uh, at hard level so that they can do the vaccinations. And uh, once we attain like 80% uh, coverage in their hearts, the, the assumption is that we'll be able to attain the heart immunity. So those options are available. They should consult their service providers who are trusted and uh, they'll be able to get the solutions. That's the first line of defense. And if the animals uh, uh, fall sick in case of a breakthrough, then drugs are available for treatment. The animal health sector in Kenya feces many challenges, including pests and diseases. And with the novel technologies such as vaccination, 
that has been developed by Kenya Agri and Agricultural Research Institute. It is possible to convert some of these losses into gains so that farmers can earn better from their agribusinesses. That is all we had for you in today's episode of The Resident Vet. Until next time, bye-bye.